Hi, good morning. This is the eighth in the monthly podcast series looking into month of August in the Bible. Glory to God in the highest. Come Lord Jesus Christ. God put in my heart for me to talk to you about biblical days for each month and read out the Bible verses stating what happened on that day or in that particular month in the Bible. Before we start, I would like to give introduction to Hebrew calendar. According to Hebrew calendar, we are now in the sixth millennium. Bible says, but beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. 2 Peter chapter 3 verse 8. And on the seventh day, God ended his work which he had done, and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Genesis chapter 2 verses 2 and 3. Jewish years are counted from the creation of the world. It is generally accepted that the sage Rabbi Yosef ben Halafta is one who made the calculation. According to Rabbi Yosef's understanding of the book of Genesis, the process of creation began on Elul 25th. And the Hebrew year count starts in year 3761 BCE which the 12th century Jewish philosopher Maimonides established as the biblical date of creation. The new year begins with Rosh Hashanah on the 1st of Tishri, which is the seventh month either in September or early October, according to the Gregorian calendar, which is in this year it was on the 19th of September 2020. Praise the Lord, it was actually my birthday. At this point, I would like to emphasize the fact that the Jewish day begins at sunset, hence the year 5781 began at sunset on the 18th of September year 2020, and the 1st of Tishri was, as we just stated, on the 19th of September year 2020, and it will end at sunset on the 6th of September year 2021. And months in the Jewish calendar are based on the phases of the moon. A new month begins on the day of the crescent moon after the new moon phase. Because the sum of 12 lunar months, i.e. 12 full cycles of the moon, is roughly 354 days, is about 11 days shorter than the solar year, which is the time Earth takes to orbit the sun, which lasts, as you know, 365 days. A thirteenth month is periodically added to keep the calendar in step with the astronomical seasons. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen to that. Let's start looking at the month of August in the Bible. Month of August is the fifth month in Hebrew calendar and the first of August year 2021 is 23rd AV year 5781. And 31st of August year 2021 is 23rd Elul year 5781 in Hebrew calendar. The first Bible verse I would like to read from is 1 Chronicles chapter 27 verse 8. The fifth captain for the fifth month was Shamut. The Israelite in his division were 24,000. The name Shamut only appears in the Bible once, and this is the Bible verse it appears under. And the meaning in Hebrew is desolation, destruction, renowned shatter, because it comes from the verb shamam, to be desolate or appalled, and from the verb hot, to shout at, and non, shem, name or fame. He is believed to be descendant of Zera, which when we read Israelite, is believed to be referring to Zera. As you know from the book of Genesis regarding the birth of Perez and Zera, the sons of Judah from Tama, which we have talked about extensively in our January podcast. Next Bible verse I would like to read from is Ezra chapter 7 verse 9 which reads, On the first day of the first month he began his journey from Babylon, and on the first day of the fifth month he came to Jerusalem, according to the good hand of his God upon him. 
as you know from Ezra chapter 1 verse 1. Now in the first year of Cyrus king of Persia that the word of the Lord by the month of Jeremiah might be fulfilled, the Lord stirred up the spirit of Cyrus king of Persia so that he made a proclamation throughout all his kingdom and also put it in writing saying, Thus says Cyrus king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth the Lord God of heavens has given me, and he has commanded me to build him a house at Jerusalem, which is in Judah, who is among you of all his people, may his God be with him, and let him go up to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and build the house of the Lord God of Israel, he is God, which is in Jerusalem. And whoever is left in any place where he dwells, let the men of his place help him with silver and gold, with goods and livestock, besides the freewill offerings for the house of God, which is in Jerusalem. Then the heads of the fathers' houses of Judah and Benjamin, and the priests and the Levites, with all whose spirits God had moved, arose to go up and build the house of the Lord, which is in Jerusalem. Hence we see Ezra traveling from first day of the first month. Bible says he began his journey from Babylon and on the first day of the fifth month he came to Jerusalem. This was the end of the Babylonian captivity as King Cyrus captured Babylon in year 539 BC and Babylonia became part of the Persian Empire. Ezra was among the priests who returned back to Jerusalem to build the house of God in Jerusalem in Judah. Bible says in chapter 7 verse 10, For Ezra had prepared his heart to seek the law of the Lord, and to do it, and to teach studies and ordinances in Israel. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that! Next Bible verse is from Ezekiel chapter 8. As you know from our July podcast, Ezekiel was among the captives who was taken into exile after the first besiege of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylonia. Bible says in Ezekiel chapter 8 verse 1, And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, on the fifth day of the month, as I sat in my house with the elders of Judah, sitting before me, that the hand of the Lord God fell upon me there. Then I looked, and there was a likeness like the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his waist and downward fire, and from his waist and upward like the appearance of brightness, like the color of amber. He stretched out the form of a hand, and took me by a lock of my hair, and the Spirit lifted me up between earth and heaven, and brought me in visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the north gate of the inner court, where the seat of the image of jealousy was, which provokes to jealousy, and behold, the glory of the God of Israel was there, like the vision that I saw in the plain. Then he said to me, Son of man, lift your eyes now toward the north. So I lifted my eyes toward the north, and there north of the altar gate was this image of jealousy in the entrance. Furthermore, he said to me, Son of man, do you see what they are doing? The great abominations that the house of Israel commits here to make me go far away from my sanctuary. Now turn again, you will see greater abominations. So he brought me to the door of court, and when I looked, there was a hole in the wall. Then he said to me, Son of man, dig into the wall. And when I dug into the wall, there was a door. And he said to me, Go in and see the wicked abominations which they are doing there. So I went in and saw, and there every sort of creeping thing, abominable beasts, and all the idols of the house of Israel, portrayed all around on the walls. And there stood before them seventy men of the elders of the house of Israel. And in their midst stood Jezaniah, the son of Shapham. Each man had a censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. Then he said to me, Son of man, have you seen what the elders of the house of Israel do in the dark, every man in the room of his idols? For they say, The Lord does not see us. The Lord has forsaken the land. And he said to me, Turn again. 
and you will see greater abominations that they are doing. So he brought me to the door of the north gate of the Lord's house, and to my dismay women were sitting there weeping for Tammuz. Then he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Turn again, you will see greater abominations than this. So he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and there at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar, were about twenty-five men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord, and their faces toward the east, and they were worshipping the sun toward the east. And he said to me, Have you seen this, O son of man? Is it a trivial thing to the house of Judah to commit the abominations which they commit here? For they have filled the land with violence. Then they have turned to provoke me to anger. Indeed, they put the branch to their noise. Therefore, I also will act in fury. My eye will not spare, nor will I have pity. And though they cry in my ears with a loud voice, I will not hear them. Thanks be to God. And the day Ezekiel was given this vision by the Lord, the fifth day of the sixth month in this year is 13th of August, 2021. Hallelujah, hallelujah, amen to that. And the next Bible verse is from Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 3. As you would also remember from our July podcast, Jeremiah was on the second besiege of Jerusalem by King Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylonia. And these are the Bible words recorded. The words of Jeremiah, the son of Hilkiah of the priests, who were in Anatoh, in the land of Benjamin, to whom the word of the Lord came in the days of Josiah, the son of Ammon, king of Judah, in the thirteenth year of his reign. It came also in the days of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, until the carrying away of Jerusalem captive in the fifth month. Here we just read that they were taken away captive in the fifth month. I just would like to read in the same chapter, chapter 1, it continues, the prophet is called, this is Jeremiah being called by the Lord to be his prophet. From verse 4, Then the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations. Then said I, O oh Lord God, behold, I cannot speak, for I am a youth. But the Lord said to me, Do not say I am a youth, for you shall go to all to whom I send you, and whatever I command you, you shall speak. Do not be afraid of their faces, for I am with you to deliver you, says the Lord. Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth. And the Lord said to me, Behold, I have put my words in your mouth. See, I have this day set you over the nations and over the kingdoms, to root out and to pull down, to destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that! What a call! Amen to that! There's another Bible verse in Jeremiah chapter 28 regarding Hananiah's falsehood, who was a prophet from Gibeon. Hananiah prophesied that the Lord will bring them back within two full years from the captivity of the king of Babylon and all the vessels of the Lord's house. Upon this, Jeremiah states in verse 9, As for the prophet who prophesies of peace, when the word of the prophet comes to pass, the prophet will be known as one whom the Lord has truly sent. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that! I love that Bible verse. Amen! When the word of the prophet comes to pass, the prophet will be known as one whom the Lord has truly sent. Amen to that! Verse 15 then the prophet Jeremiah said to Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah, the Lord has not sent you, but you make these people trust in a lie. Therefore thus says the Lord, Behold, I will cast you from the face of the earth. This year you shall die, because you have taught rebellion against the Lord. 
So Hananiah the prophet died the same year in the seventh month. The word was spoken on the fifth month and Hananiah the prophet died two months later in the seventh month. The next Bible verse we see for the month of August is found in Haggai chapter 1. It's titled The Command to Build God's House. In the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet to Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel, governor of Judah, and to Joshua the son of Zehozadak, the high priest, saying, Thus speaks the Lord of hosts, saying, This people says the time has not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then the word of the Lord came by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you yourselves to dwell in your paneled houses, and this temple to lay in ruins? Now therefore, thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. You have sown much, and bring in little. You eat, but do not have enough. You drink, but you are not filled with drink. You clothe yourselves, but no one is warm. And he who earns wages, earns wages to put into a bag with holes. Thus says the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountains and bring wood and build a temple, that I may take pleasure in it and be glorified, says the Lord. You look for much, but indeed it came too little. And when you brought it home, I blew it away. Why, says the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is in ruins, while every one of you runs to his own house. Therefore the heavens above you withhold the dew, and the earth withholds its fruit. For I called for a drought on the land and the mountains, on the grain and the new wine and the oil, on whatever the ground brings forth, on men and livestock, and on all the labor of your hands. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel and Joshua the son of Zehozadak, the high priest with all the remnant of the people obey the voice of the Lord their God and the words of Haggai the prophet as the Lord their God had sent them and the people feared the presence of the Lord then the Haggai the Lord's messenger spoke the Lord's message to the people saying I am with you says the Lord so the Lord stirred up the spirit of Zerubbabel the son of Shealtiel governor of Judah and the spirit of Joshua the son of Zehozadak the high priest and the spirit of all the remnant of the people, and they came and worked on the house of the Lord of hosts, their God, on the twenty-fourth day of the sixth month, in the second year of King Darius. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Amen to that. The word came to Haggai in the second year of King Darius, in the sixth month, on the first day of the month, for them to build the house of God. In this year is 9th of August 2021. At this point, I also would like to bring to your attention that King Darius is the son of King Cyrus the Great and the father of King Ahasuerus, Esther's husband. He is also believed to be Xerxes I. We have talked about King Ahasuerus extensively in our February podcast. If you would like to refer to it, that will be great. This word came to Haggai in the second year of King Darius, while the next Bible verse for the month of August from Zechariah chapter 7 verse 3, and it states, Now in the fourth year of King Darius, it came to pass that the word of the Lord came to Zechariah on the fourth day of the ninth month, Kislev, when the people sent Sherezer, with Regem Melech and his men to the house of God, to pray before the Lord and to ask the priests who were in the house of the Lord of hosts, and the prophets saying, Should I weep in the fifth month and fast as I have done for so many years? Then the word of the Lord of hosts came to me, saying, Say to all the people of the land and to the priests, When you fasted and mourned in the fifth and seventh months, during those seventy years, did you really fast for me? For me? When you eat and when you drink, do you not eat and drink for yourselves? Should you not have obeyed the words which the Lord proclaimed through the former prophets, when Jerusalem and the cities around it were inhabited and prosperous, 
and the south and the lowland were inhabited. This word came to Zechariah two years later, in the fourth year of King Darius. And what God is saying here is that he wants obedience, then fasting. For they have seen that the temple is about to be finished. And they asked the priests who were in the house of the lords and the prophets, whether they should be still continue to weep and fast as they have done during those 70 years when they were in captivity. And what God is saying is that those sort of fasts are not acceptable to God, which seem to be springing up from form of duty. Rather than truthfully seeking the Lord and pleasing Him with obedience, God wants us to be obedient to His holy will over fasting and weeping. Let's be obedient to God at all times and seek his favor upon us and pray diligently, earnestly to our Heavenly Father, Lord Jesus Christ, for them to come upon us strong, for them to show themselves strong for us, upon us for their glory. For we are mere mortals down here. We live in a fallen world. We need our Heavenly Father and our brother, Lord Jesus Christ, the King of all kings, the Lord of all lords, to be with us. He is the light of the world. He is the Son of God, God from God, light from light, our Lord Jesus Christ, who we need at all times in our lives, at every turn, at every second, at every point. For without the Lord, we are nothing. Without the Lord, we have nothing. Let's obey the Lord. Let's seek the Lord and invite him to our hearts with earnest prayers for him to guide us to his holy will, for him to be with us at all times. Rest assured he is. Rest assured he lives his life in us, with us, through us. Our fasting and prayer should come before the Holy God in earnesty rather than out of deity. Let's seek the Lord with all our hearts, soul, minds and strength. Let's love the Lord with all our hearts, soul, mind and strength forever and ever. In the name of Lord Jesus Christ. Amen.